Welcome guys, Kritsta and today I'm gonna show you why you should not try Lilith Echo of Lilith fight with Rand Biot. Now is it possible to beat Lilith with Rand Biot? Technically speaking, yeah. But we have to understand that Echo of Lilith, the boss, the, his mechanics, they're very random at, at some times and they're gonna surprise you with waves, right, the one-shotting waves, pretty unpredictably and the chance that you're gonna react on them, it's very, very, very small. So, <laughs> is it worth it to try whole months while you actually figure out every single small detail about this fight to able to beat it when you can use Hota build for 17 million bonk, right? So, we can see how much unfair those two are. And I also wanted to show you a footages how much unfair it is uh, to, to fight Lilith with Rand build. And my Rand build, it's almost perfect. I, I, I've been playing Rand build from the beginning of Season 0. <laughs> and I'm very sad to admit that Lily fight is close to impossible. Now, we have to understand and we have to question ourselves why there is not a single video of somebody beating Lilith with Rand build. Why there is not a single video if we if, if we go away from the rupture exp, uh, exploit, right? This is uh, I, I'm not using a rupture. This is no rupture exploit. It's not working anymore. They patched it up. Uh, they fix it. So um, now to back up my theory, I will show you some couple of clips uh, explaining why this fight is so unfair for Rand, like I said 100 times already in this video. And then if you're stubborn enough and you think that you can beat her with Rand, you want some glory, let me show you my best version of Rand build against Lilith. Yeah, so let's begin. Now, as a Rand build, we are bleed build, right? We have to stack up this damage. How are we stacking this damage? While well, we are attacking the boss. More attack speed, better. We stack those bleeds, we get some multipliers, X damage uh, from different buffs, and we are keep on hitting the boss. So, I can go up to 800,000 uh, DPS tick per, per second, which, in my opinion, I did a pretty good job. But it's still not enough, <laughs> all right? Now, once you bring her to around 75%, then the stuff gets a little bit more complicated. She's gonna spawn those two ads that you have to kill. They're gonna spawn some blood tumors that's gonna explode. <laughs> and you have to jiggle around with randomly generated waves in a way that they doesn't make any sense sometimes. And you have to deal with this constantly while you're dodging. It's a mess. Now. The problem with my build is that if I drop vulnerability, there is no way in particular to bring it back. So from the glyphs I'm using exploit, this gives us uh, every single 20 seconds, 3 seconds um, a vulnerability on enemy. And then with enchanted rain, we're extending the duration, which is cool. But if you hit the tumors and then you have to dodge, these 3 seconds will pass away and you might not have enough damage to actually beat the tumor. So this is a very hilarious way to die, even if you're doing a very good job dodging. So yeah, uh, you have to calculate it basically when to dodge, when to attack, when you need to bring them on low HP. So you make sure that after you dodged immediately the waves, you can go kill the tumors and, and then have enough time to start dodging to be in, in the correct location into uh, the boss fight so you can um, survive the waves. <laughs> so... That sounds uh, completely insane and I go through this couple of multiple times in my streams uh, and somehow I managed to beat them and uh, continue forward. So this is when you're fighting for her half of HP. That's when it becomes very tricky. Now, as we said from the beginning, a Rand build needs to hit a little bit couple of times to uh, stack up the bleeds in order to you start doing damage. But the problem is that she performs maximum of 2, 3, abilities and then she jumps from the waves now why is that exhausting mentally because i personally know that those waves are not coded perfectly or there was intentionally coded in a way that sometimes you can be surprised and die but it's not fair for rand build compared with hot build because rand build is exposed on bigger stress for a longer time than playing hot build who is bonking for 17 million so the bottom line is that you try to stack up your bleed and the boss just start to jump. 
jump, 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 jump. She performs two ability, he jumps. Three, three ability, he jumps. I can input all of my DPS on her uh, while comparing with other builds which can perform ludicrous numbers of DPS, which is which is kind of very funny. So yeah, uh, the point, the point, the point, the point is, the point is that even if you finish this one, uh, later on is it's gonna take um, kind of an enormous amount of time uh, doing this crap and you might die from unexpected waves that are just bullshit. So yeah, now I managed to hit her to half HP, I uh, didn't go any further and I don't think I want to kill her with rent build. What the fuck? Now, for those of you that want to be stubborn. Alright, for you, you guys there, who wants to be very stubborn and you think, I want a glory. I want to be that guy who actually beat Lilith. So, let me show you my best version of this rent build. The most discovered rent version of it. And you can take a note. So, <laughs> so let's start. Let's start from the very, very, very beginning. Now. Uh, as uh, for, for, for the people who actually watched my last video, Rent on Ecstasy, now everything changed because this is for a Lily fight. So I'm no, lo no longer using a Lunging Strike and I'm on Flay. Now why Flay? X, 10% bleeding damage. Pretty, pretty nice. Make sure that you have Violent Rent, so X, 12 damage to vulnerable enemy. Then moving on, somebody will say, why the heck are you using Ground Stomp? Well, as we saw the video, her half HP when she the little fits on half HP. If if I don't have something that's just gonna give me some damage, right? I'm fucked. Like some some people might say, bro, don't go ground stomp, go for Wrath of the Berserker. Really? So you're gonna use Wrath of the Berserker for three seconds, and then she's just gonna jump, and half your duration of Be Wrath of Berserker is gone, and you just don't get anything when you can use Ground Stomp every single uh, 12 seconds with combination of um, X15 damage. I mean, come on, Wrath of the Berserker for me it's not the case. Uh, I think Ground Stomp it's even better, and when you enchant it a little bit more you're getting extra fury as well, which sometimes pretty much ha helps um, because rent is not... It, it's a heavy cost ability, right? So, the the shouts, obviously, potion, iron skin, very, very, very important. As we can see, five points in Warcry. I'm trying to squeeze every single point of damage that I can while I'm comfortably tanking every single one of her fulfilling attacks that doesn't one-shot me but do some chunk of damage. And, you know, I'm, uh, I'll show you how I'm comfortably healing myself from it. Uh, shout duration, obviously. We have movement speed. You, you want to make sure that you have that. If you're a rent user and you put her below injured, <laughs> congratulations. I never got that luck. So these points are absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not needed. Uh, X9 damage to close enemy. We have... 18% X damage to vulnerable enemies with bleeds. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty important. We have X12 damage while fortified. How we get in fortification? It's because we are swapping weapons. While we're swapping weapons, it's because I'm using this point that's gonna help me out with fury generation. So basically, Flay, it's on my two one handed weapons and rent obviously on the main, he uh, main, he main hand. Now, this way I'm performing this attack more faster, so I'm applying this 10% damage uh, more faster. I'm swapping the weapons, get some fury back, um, swapping multiple times, giving me a fortification and then fortification, uh, giving me extra X12 damage. And the faster I do that, the better it's gonna feel the fight. So, uh, easy as that. X 50% critical damage, pretty much needed. Duelist, optional thing, it's just gonna perform more faster the flay, uh, nothing else. Uh, Tempted Fury, this is actually pretty nice because when I use all of my buffs, sometimes I'm above my rage, so having more maximum fury, right, it's better because you can just store more uh, more rage to perform rent uh, while you don't have those buffs that generate you that much rage. So it's it's just it's just quality. Uh, you can it's kind of optional in a way. Uh, we talk about this one, very important. You want, we want this one 100%. Why? Because her easy attacks that doesn't one-shot you definitely gonna de deal some junk uh, portion uh, 
big junk portion of your health so it's nice that you can now uh, heal yourself for every uh, single hundred fury spend that so that's that works kind of pretty well and obviously for a crit bleed build gushing wound you want that on 100 now the paragon and everything else is going to be into the video description below so you don't i don't need to explain every single thing in this paragon make sure that every single buff that you're going for it's having enough requirements for stats this is what i'm going for as we can see here plus 10% physical damage uh, because I have the dexterity up and running uh, perfectly. So yeah, I cut out every single defensive mechanics that I could as much as I can to invest them in as much as possible damage that actually make it sense. Alright guys, let's go on the gear and imprints. Now every single piece of gear that you need uh, with the exact stats will be in the video description below so you can just check it out. Uh, now for the imprints, let me show you uh, swapping weapons we talk about a fortification here we have basic skill increase damage of core this is like x10 damage uh, which is pretty uh, pretty nice uh, because we are using uh, iron skin constantly plus x50 percent damage uh, then we have ground stomp that give us x 14 percent damage uh, the damage over time effect it's complete shit um i don't know if if they can make those uh, those effects actually stack from all of your resources it was going to be nice but this is complete shit like the dot against lilith it's 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 just not there uh now more resource more damage this is pretty nice we have this is the most important one actually uh whatever you do critical strike chance that you increase attack speed as we said before um the more times you attack with bleed build the more you're gonna stack uh, bleeds and this is your damage basically so as we can see i craft 11 heavy assault elixirs so um yeah <laughs> you definitely need that one uh if you rent user this is actually pretty 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 good you're getting extra fury will help you with uh, spamming rent more generation uh, fury per second while spamming rent pretty nice as well uh this is super super important like this is super important to be in on amulet for the simple fact that she even even if she doesn't one shot you with your, with her abilities she's gonna do a really huge junk of damage so it's pretty nice that you can reduce that damage and lower your stress on on that fight right you don't want to die from her her not one shotting moves because that's gonna be very frustrated when you need to deal with the waves so um yeah pretty 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 important now the last thing but not on the last place is the technique now guys you have to understand that every single we have two separated buff active buff and we have buff that depends on what weapon you use now for example if i use sword expertise what i'm getting it's 20 percent of the direct damage that i'm gonna do it's gonna be um as a bleed right well what is that bad that's bad because 20 percent of 3k it's nothing it's completely garbage so um don't fall for that you don't need that 100 percent what you need is x vulnerability this increases the damage to vulnerability to enemies by x percent this multiplies the vulnerability source because as we every single many content creators uh, explain we have damage multiplied by critical multiplied by vulnerability so this multiplies the vulnerability which multiplies everything else the only thing that you need to do is just include the the x technique and you can use whatever weapon you want and you're still gonna get this x 50 percent increase damage to vulnerable enemies and that's the beauty of it what about the other buff well if you use a sword in particular you're gonna get the down buff below which says more bleeding damage for five seconds after you kill an enemy so actually you guys might ask yourself but why then you use sword because the tumors of the lily fight when you kill them you're gonna get 30 percent x bleeding damage is gonna help you out with stacking the bleed and you have those constantly through the first phase so i think that's a pretty 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 huge deal to get your damage more uh compare if you use an axe if you use an axe you're gonna get what 10 percent increase, increase chance it's not the worst but 30 percent increase bleeding damage x that's kind of a little bit more tempting 
Plus, swords are way more attacking, way more faster, which means that you're going to stack more bleeds. Alrighty, guys. Well, this is the end of the video. If this video was informative, support the channel, click the like button, subscribe button. Um, you know, comment anything if you have any questions. And um, see you in the next video.